Hi, I'm Eric Johnson, the Dean of Vanderbilt's Owen Graduate School of Management. And this week, we're in Nashville hosting the Informs Healthcare Conference. And uh, today with us, I, we have Chris Joshi. Uh, Chris is going to be talking about consumer-driven health. He's a vice president at Endion. And it's just so great to have you today, Chris. Great to be here, Eric. Well, tell us a little bit about Endion. Endion is uh, the largest intelligent healthcare network in the United States. Even though we are not really a consumer brand, people don't know MDN as a consumer brand, we really are almost ubiquitous in the healthcare system. We connect almost all payers, providers, pharmacies, labs, and allow them to transact uh, with regard to healthcare claims and payments uh, and so on. We also provide a number of solutions and services around the transactional network that allow payers and providers to optimize their revenue cycles. So um, over the past uh, several years, we've been adding to our portfolio and, and growing as a company, but also starting to do much more around supporting the industry drive towards consumer-driven healthcare. So that's the topic today, consumer-driven healthcare. What, what is driving that? So consumer-driven healthcare at some level um, is an inevitability uh, because fundamentally when you try to answer the question, what do consumers want? It really varies from consumer to consumer. And uh, people often think that uh, by providing universal health care or by providing universal insurance coverage, that you're automatically solving the problem of meeting consumers' needs. Uh, unfortunately, what it leaves open um, is the question of what consumers really want. So the healthcare system, the consumer-driven healthcare system, should be giving consumers choices and the tools to choose among those choices. And that allows each consumer to make the right decision for themselves in terms of the kind of plan coverage that they would like, how to use their care, what to optimize for, uh, and in the end, take more control of their healthcare lives. Wow, so I can see that uh, the impact for patients. What does it mean for providers? What it means for providers is a pretty big shift from mm -hmm. uh, essentially catering to an institutional customer base to a retail customer base. And a similar shift is, is um, underway for payers as well. For the most part, payers have been selling to institutional customers, basically employers, as their primary constituency. That is now shifting to a retail consumer who's buying a, an insurance plan on exchange. So both payers and providers have to rapidly adapt to this new retail marketplace in which consumers will demand a lot of transparency around healthcare cost. That is not something the industry has uh, been able to do very well in the past. But uh, consumers will, will make the system more honest, more transparent, and will require significant shift in, uh, in the way payers and providers treat their, uh, uh, their members and patients. So this week we uh, are spending a lot of time thinking about analytics, uh, big data analytics, which of course uh, MDON is certainly a big data company. Uh, where do you see analytics taking healthcare? Where, where's the uh, benefits and, and what role will analytics play in healthcare? Analytics will play a huge role in helping consumers make better decisions. Uh, as you know, the healthcare industry has not really been uh, a huge investor in, 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 uh, in information technology. And uh, with the recent investments in electronic medical records um, and uh, hospital automation tools, we're finding a lot of data is being generated. But that data is not necessarily being used very productively, especially from a consumer standpoint. Mm -hmm. The system is not transparent, and uh, the analytical insights that are available are not being made available to consumers, and consumers are not educated enough to take advantage of the analytics when they are available. So we see the need for not only big data and analytics, but also an intelligent network that can put a context on the analytics. So if you just have an analytical insight by itself, it can often seem isolated and meaningless and not be very actionable. But when you zoom out a little bit and you actually see the context, you get a perspective around which that insight makes a lot more sense and somebody can act on it. So we think that it's really important to not only focus on the analytic, but the delivery mechanism through the network, which can track the location, the time, the context of the information and the insight that's being made available to the consumer. So we think it's this combination of big data, analytics, and a smart network that can really deliver um, a lot of value to consumers and to providers. So with all that data, uh, you know, certainly security must be a concern. I mean, a lot of sensitive patient data flowing around in the healthcare system. How, how should the industry be thinking about this and what are some of the security issues that you face? Security is a huge issue in all industries today. 
Um, but particularly in healthcare, because the information is so sensitive, it's very important for um, all stakeholders, payers, providers, even consumers, to be much more aware um, of the need for better security. And uh, that is across the board. However, security should not be a crippling constraint on the industry. If you look at banking, for example, uh, they've had good security for years. When you put your money in your checking account or you use your credit card despite the amount of fraud and, and uh, uh, other um, problems in the credit card industry, you're still not worried really about uh, using your credit card. People still use it pretty freely. And you're not worried about your money from your bank account disappearing somehow. It's pretty, pretty well managed. We can be using the healthcare system with the same level of confidence provided we put in place the right kind of security from the ground up. The security should not be an afterthought. Uh, unfortunately, because of the lack of information technology awareness and investments in the healthcare industry over the past couple of decades, um, healthcare has some catching up to do. Yeah. But I think we can get there with the right tools and, and the right leadership and the right attention to security. That's great. Well, thanks so much for spending the week with us here in Nashville. It's a pleasure. Thank you.